everyone. Let me tell you a story from the Japanese folklore. The love between a son and mother was so strong to abolish the age-old tradition of abandoning the old people in the mountains to die. Let me take you to Japan's small village in the country called Shining. Long, long ago, there lived at the foot of the mountain a poor farmer and his aged, widowed mother. They owned a bit of land which supplied them with food and they were humble, peaceful, and happy. The country shining was governed by a despotic leader who, though a warrior, had a great and cowardly shrinking from anything suggestive of failing health and strength. This caused him to send out a cruel proclamation. The entire province was given strict orders to immediately put to death all aged people. Those were barbarous days and the custom of abandoning old people to die was not uncommon. It's an order by the king to abandon all the old aged people in Obatsuyama, the mountain of the abandoning of the aged. Everyone in the country must obey the order of the king. If not, you shall die. The poor farmer loved his aged mother with tender reverence, and the order filled his heart with sorrow. Just at sundown, when his day's work was ended, he took a quantity of unwhitened rice, which was the principal food for the poor, and he cooked, dried it, and tied it in a square cloth, which he swung in a bundle around his neck, along with a gourd filled with cool, sweet water. Mother, I have no other choice left. It's okay, son. Carry me to the Obatsuyama, I am ready. Then he lifted his helpless old mother to his back and started on his painful journey up the mountain. The road was long and steep. The narrow road was crossed and recrossed by many paths made by the hunters and woodcutters. In some place, they lost and confuses, but he gave no heed. One path or another, it mattered not. On he went, climbing blindly upward, ever upward towards the high, bare summit of Obatsuyama. The old mother saw her son rushing between paths, worrying about his safety. She quietly dropped twigs along their way to mark the path, fearing he might get lost. At last, the summit was reached. Weary and heartsick, the youth gently released his burden and silently prepared a place of comfort as his last duty to the loved one. Gathering fallen pine needles, he made a soft cushion. He wrapped her padded coat more closely about the stooping shoulders, and with tearful eyes and an aching heart, he said farewell. Mother, it's time for me to leave. Son, don't let your eyes be blind. The mountain road is dangerous. Look closely and follow the path marked by twigs. They'll lead you safely down. The son, surprised, glanced back at the path, then at his mother's worn hands, scratched and soiled from her loving work for her son. O oh, honorable mother, your kindness breaks my heart. I will not leave you. Together we will follow the path of twigs, and together we will die. Once more, he shouldered his burden. How light it seemed now. And hastened down the path, through the shadows and the moonlight to the little hut in the valley. Beneath the kitchen floor was a walled closet for food, which was covered and hidden from view. There, the son hid his mother, supplying her with everything she needed, continually watching and fearing she would be discovered. Time passed, and he was beginning to feel safe when again, the governor sent forth heralds bearing an unreasonable order. The king 
demands his subjects to present him a rope of ashes by burning the dead bodies of the aged family members. The entire province trembled with dread. The order must be obeyed, yet who in all shining could make a rope of ashes? One night, in great distress, the son whispered the news to his hidden mother. Wait! I will think! I will think! Make rope of twisted straw, then stretch it upon a row of flat stones and burn it on a windless night. He called the people together and did as she said. And when the blaze died down, there upon the stones, with every twist and fiber showing perfectly, lay a rope of ashes. The king was pleased at the wit of the youth and praised greatly. Young man, how do you get such wisdom to make this rope of ash? Alas, alas, the truth must be told. And with deep bows, he related his story. The governor listened and then meditated in silence. Finally, he lifted his head. Shining needs more than strength of youth. Ah, that I should have forgotten the well-known saying, with the crown of snow, there cometh wisdom. The law of abandoning the old in Obatsu Yama is abolished from today, as the king thinks that wisdom comes as one ages. That very hour, the cruel law was abolished and custom drifted into as far a past that only legends remain. The love for a mother had the power to abolish the cruel laws. It proves that the aged are the wisest with all the experiences they have in their life. Matsuo Basho, 1644 to 1694, is one of the most famous poets of Japan. In Japan, many of his poems are seen on monuments and traditional sites. Basho was introduced to poetry at a young age and he quickly became well known throughout Japan. He made a living as a teacher, but later traveled throughout the country to gain inspiration for his writing. Thanks for watching.